All right, today on the FYD podcast, I got John Paganini, uh, founder and CEO of IoT Directions, uh, here to have a little bit of a candid conversation on the Internet of Things. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. So, I want to start off with just getting a feel for your background. So, you know, I've known you for, for a little bit, sure, but I want to sure. make sure that everyone else is on the same page. Yep, well, it's a, it's a long page, actually, so I don't <laughs> know how far we want to go back or should go back, yeah. uh, but certainly there's been a many, many years in, in IT itself. Yeah. Which is, you know, my, my college was all about business and IT, and the, mm -hmm. my master's was in healthcare administration. Okay. So, kind of a mix of all of those three things. Yeah. So, as uh, I started out in life, we went to a big company like White Motor Credit in, here in Cleveland, okay. and then another company called Praxair, mm -hmm. which took me over to uh, the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And those positions were managing computer services for the large organizations. Okay. Okay. So, um, back in the mid 90s or so, there was a program called Lotus. Notes, okay. and we were doing some innovative things in Lotus Notes. It was groupware at the time. It was kind of a, a sharing environment, and uh, we were working on some Salesforce automation, okay. early Salesforce.com uh, stuff in a sense. And there was a small company in uh, Rochester, which was uh, ex-Kodak okay. uh, people, and they said, "Oh, let's do this startup." But here, you know, you're in this big environment, the, the big company, and life is good. Um, but the temptation to move just got too great, and uh, I left the large organizations to go do a startup. And so that startup turned into a, from seven people, we took it to 50 people in okay. Rochester, okay. we ended up selling it. But along the way, uh, the, the entrepreneurial bug, I, I guess, yeah. uh, that Never seed uh, got planted, yeah, the, uh, yeah. which may have been there the whole time, who right, knows. Right. But, uh, uh, what was interesting about that, there was an interesting uh, opportunity to uh, manage a, a, a company we acquired in Singapore for a year. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a really good taste of running a small company in a foreign country okay. uh, and traveling to foreign distant lands like uh, okay. Kuala Lumpur and Indonesia and Thailand. So okay. uh, cool stuff along the way. Yeah. Uh, Did you ever live out that way at all? Yeah. Or? So okay. I lived in Singapore for a year okay. and uh, okay. ran the company. It was, it was yeah, a great. Yeah. Small company, but okay. uh, built the call center for the government of Singapore. Okay, uh, so it was an exciting project yeah. and uh, to learn how Singapore is. And uh, certainly Singapore uh, was a great learning experience in how a country um, focused very much on efficiencies and best yeah. practices of the okay. world uh, would, could implement uh, those, um, those industries, if you will, like the telecommunications industry versus the healthcare industry, mm -hmm. how they managed that uh, was yeah. pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, great environment. Okay. So then, from from the Singapore company, you come you come back. Yeah, I came back yeah. to uh, Rochester, and that yeah. company was still going okay. strong. And um, I just decided to come back to Cleveland because I had uh, moved to Cleveland from yeah. uh, New York back okay. in, uh, when I was about sixteen or so. Okay. Came back to Cleveland and uh, started uh, consulting on my own, and okay. uh, we did a startup a radiology information system, mm -hmm. a company called RiskLogic, which ended up getting acquired okay. by. Yeah. Um, Merge Healthcare, yep. which just recently got yep. bought by IBM, pretty yep. exciting. And uh, after that, um, I did some consulting at the Cleveland Clinic on some mm -hmm. special projects, uh, and then did another startup out in Virginia mm -hmm. uh, for pathology, built okay. a pathology information yeah. system. Um, that one was a pretty interesting project. We uh, we had some software that was early days of uh, AI in a sense, mm -hmm. and uh, we could detect on images certain patterns uh, like breast exams and we were asked by the government of South Africa if we could detect tuberculosis mm -hmm. on the images and so we put our computer aided okay. detection yeah, yeah. technology to work and we discovered that we could tell on the slide uh, whether there was tuberculosis or whether there wasn't so we were accurate yeah. with like 80 to 90 percent of the time and it was that one you know that 10 percent of the time where um, we had to have a human uh, yeah, check yeah. it. But we built a very cool system where we took uh, an existing uh, information system, yeah, yeah. Uh, we took a uh, radiology information system yeah, and yeah. turned it into pathology. So the, the very beginning of a neural network Ex doing uh, In, a, in doing any a ways, yes. Yeah. So we, we had the information system, so yeah. we uh, connected it to a, um, a device that could handle 200 slides. Mm -hmm. And the arm would go in, grab the slide, we would read the slide, identify who the patient was, put it under the microscope, and automated uh, the sequence, if you will, of mm -hmm. how a technologist would typically read it, like in a Z pattern, 
we'd capture 100 images, we'd put it into the archive, and then we would have our software analyze the images okay, and yeah, determine yeah. whether there was tuberculosis or yeah. not. Phenomenal device. Yeah. We thought it was going to change the world of tuberculosis, and uh, it just never really turned it into never, a, never took off. that uh, yeah, Nobel Prize. We <laughs> what, do, why, do, why do you think that never took uh, off? There was things with the government of Singapore yeah. and our own internal operations okay. that just never uh, just sought never, to the very end, but it was, a, it was a very cool uh, invention. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah. Is that still around today? or Not, not, not too really? much. Okay. Not too okay. much, yeah. Huh. So that was a fun, fun yeah, startup, yeah. you know. So. so from there, you pretty much, I guess when you started to enter business, you were kind of in healthcare already, you know, yeah, or like health yeah. tech kind yeah, of thing, exactly. and then kind yeah. of moving yeah, through there. Yeah, in, in so. there, there was a, a, some other healthcare things that I didn't mention, but one of them was building a, building a patient encounter yeah. system back in 1995, mm -hmm. um, and, and actually installing that at uh, Hillcrest Hospital at mm -hmm. some private practice. So okay. I got my yeah, feet yeah. wet and understanding what the electronic yeah. medical record uh, entails. Yeah. And in that startup, I mentioned risk logic, uh, also understanding interoperability and systems integration and how radiology has to talk to cardiology, has to talk to electronic medical record and you know all the different yeah, things yeah. that are involved in interoperability right. uh, was, a, was a big part of um, my knowledge and understanding along sure. the way. So that, that's interesting that you managed to kind of stay you know, uh, involved in an industry the whole time. Now during that time, were, did you branch out of projects that weren't necessarily healthcare, or have you kind of you know meshed back and forth? Hmm. Or most of them are pretty healthcare focused. Yeah. Um, uh, f for example, many of the projects that I worked on at the Cleveland Clinic, one was called uh, Enterprise Imaging, mm -hmm. where because uh, I had an imaging background. Mm -hmm. It's not just radiology images mm -hmm. that the um, clinicians mm -hmm. uh, and the healthcare professionals need to look at. In the electronic medical record, they need to look at cardiology mm -hmm. images, dentistry, ophthalmology, all these things that are um, image-based, but that net were never really available inside the electronic medical record. So that concept is called enterprise imaging when you incorporate all these oh, images. And, and now yeah. people with their cell phones are taking pictures of their uh, their wrists and their hands and you know there's wounds yeah. and they're submitting that to the medical record too. Right, so right. certain standards have to be applied to that as well as making it available. Uh, and, and so this allows the physicians to not only see images um, in one place along with the discrete data that's in the record, but they could also start making some interesting correlations. Oh, I see what's going on here right. in the laboratory tests, and now I can look at the cardiology. So yeah, all yeah. of that, so you know, all that is meshes into in one, one profile. One place, and, okay. uh, uh, making it easy to access. So that yeah. was enterprise imaging. Another okay. cool project I worked on at the, uh, the clinic was IBM Watson mm -hmm. and extracting the okay, information yeah, yeah. of uh, Epic in this case. It's a medical pretty high scale thing. And, yeah, yeah de identifying yeah. it and sending it off to Watson, and Watson would, you know, come back with a nice dashboard of what Watson thinks the, uh, the the issue might be. Yeah. So very very cool technology there. So that's interesting. So you not only have you been kind of dealing with healthcare the whole time, but you've also been dealing with cutting edge technology integrating with healthcare. Yeah, and right. I, yeah. It's so been fortunate and a, a yeah, yeah. big learning experience. And yeah. That has helped me really see what the future is mm -hmm. and is is on its way to be, uh, yeah. especially with artificial intelligence. Right. And so now, and now that we've uh, the industry has got all this data in electronic format right. where it didn't before. We can now start building the AI, the algorithms to look at that and then think about things like population health, which mm -hmm. weren't possible before because right. it was all on paper. So that's why the industry is in such a, a really interesting place right now. And this is going to get better and better yeah. as we get smarter and smarter. Right? <laughs> oh, hopefully. Yeah. But uh, I think that as, um, as we get more of this information that collects more and more data, which is really where IoT is coming in to, to healthcare, and that's kind of what the wave you're, you're looking to ride on, it looks like, at least to me. AI's place in that, again, this, is, this might be more of my opinion than what I think is actually happening, mm -hmm. but it seems to be to sort that data. So when you have everyone with a billion devices taking a billion pictures and, and sending in all this information, some of it good, some of it bad, some of it needed, some of it not, mm -hmm. you need AI to sort that. Is that what you're seeing? Or, or how are you seeing AI interface with a lot of these healthcare uh, environments today? AI is of impacting different elements of mm -hmm. the healthcare information spectrum, for yeah, lack yeah. of a better term. Um, but you know, a typical example would be maybe an app uh, for behavioral modification, as an example. Mm -hmm. So if you're maybe you're 
uh, a mother and you need to understand what things you need to do during the pregnancy. Uh, as you know, in Cleveland, there's an infant mortality mm -hmm. uh, issue, and, and a big initiative here is to really improve the infant mortality rates within mm -hmm. Northeast Ohio. And so there might be an app that really helps the pregnant mother uh, monitor uh, her activities and her mm -hmm. lifestyle and help, help her actually engage with the app in using some artificial intelligence can make some interesting suggestions yeah, and approaches yeah. into how she should, could better manage uh, the health of herself along with the baby yeah. during that nine months. And then post-pregnancy, uh, you know, after the baby's out there, what do I do the first year? So, you know, some of the challenges uh, that, that mothers have in this case is they hear this information, um, but then when they get home, uh, you know, some of that information is not quite uh, yeah. permanent yet. Right, so, right. you know, there's, there's, it's a good yeah. use of, uh, you know, mobile uh, access to health care. Yeah, so providing sure. access uh, to the community, mm -hmm. um, especially the underserved, is, is a major effort, uh, you know, being put forward today in Northeast Ohio. Yeah. So that's one example yeah. of uh, yeah, using absolutely. AI, yeah. you know, and, 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 and addressing, mm -hmm. uh, like opioids, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a lot of yeah. applications being developed in the opioids uh, initiative as well mm -hmm. uh, to fix those types of situations. So, uh, and, and a lot of those, I think, are also implementing sensors, right, to kind of say, okay, it was more of the baby project. I'm not as familiar with the opioid yes. thing, but we're saying, you know, I've seen the thermometers that you just, that are basically stickers you put on a baby, yep. and those feed in. You have lots of data coming in. Are you seeing in the healthcare an apprehension towards implementing some of the, these sensors or some of these Internet of Things technologies uh, and maybe not in healthcare, but maybe in some of the other industries that you're interfacing with. Mm. But uh, there seems to be, at least from what I've seen, a little bit of an apprehension to uh, implementing these, maybe from a security concern, because uh, obviously there's a lot of biometric data that's not Absolutely. collected, you know, even with the fit, something as simple as a Fitbit, people have a lot of concerns there. Yep. Uh, healthcare is interesting because I think that it's always kind of at the cutting edge, right? It's just one of those things where you have to be as up to date as possible. Otherwise, you might be a step behind. Sure. And a step behind could mean something fatal, right? And then, uh, obviously, in extreme cases. So, do you see the same apprehension that you might see in, in manufacturing, for example, um, where they're they're not as interested in, in plugging in sensors all the time to check how their CNC machines are because they just don't want to introduce something new to their older technology, or they don't want to have a new security risk on the table. Um, do you think that healthcare is facing the same things, or what are the challenges in sure. implementing IoT for healthcare? Yeah, so um, some of there uh, will have, a, there might be some common threads there. So you mentioned yeah. both healthcare yeah. and manufacturing as far as right. what the apprehension might be. Um, but I'm not feeling apprehension as much as, um, except in the area of cybersecurity, as, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. Of course, all IT, IoT has to be protected. Right. And there's a lot of solutions out there, as you, as you know, yeah. um, to help protect the data on that, you know, a layer of cybersecurity that sits mm -hmm. on top. So we want to be conscious of not preventing or prohibiting innovation mm -hmm. with sensors yeah. and data due to cybersecurity concerns. So it's always, um, I, I'm not seeing apprehension, I'm seeing a, a lot of uh, exciting innovation with sensors in all areas of healthcare. Now the funny thing is people say, oh healthcare is not really cutting edge, but in so many ways, well, you have it to truly be. Yeah. is. And a lot of the innovation is happening in healthcare that mm -hmm. um, could set precedence, if you will, in other industries mm -hmm. such as manufacturing or even retail or banking, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially with blockchain. So, um, I I believe that uh, there's not necessarily an apprehension yeah. uh, to adopt and implement innovation. Now, there's other concerns in the uh, healthcare industry or uh, issues uh, initiatives have to be addressed, like FDA. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that uh, the device itself has been blessed by FDA. And right, FDA, right. Uh, yeah. not too um, re um, f long ago, uh, blessed, if you will, the first artificial intelligence uh, yeah. solution, which was pretty um, cutting edge, in a sense, for okay, FDA yeah, to, yeah. to look at to, to allow that and say, yeah. okay, this is good. Yeah. So that really kind of opened the door to mm -hmm. what we can do with IoT and AI yeah. in a healthcare environment. So. Um, that's the challenge, you know, how do you make sure that you're protecting the safety and the, and the patients, mm -hmm. 
uh, and the clinicians, uh, at the same time allowing for innovation to occur yeah, in the industry yeah. where it needs to, like the long life cycle of uh, clinical drug trials, as an example. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So there's, there's some opportunities where um, blockchain, because of the security, and IoT, and and a cool apps yeah. can hasten the process of, of the area of uh, a clinical trial, for example. So where are you seeing uh, IoT fit in mostly in healthcare? Like where, where are you seeing it making those impact rather? Hmm. I would say the patient experience is, is one area where IoT can start to um, help the process. But you know, let's think about um, organizations like Uber and Lyft who have mm -hmm. a, a health uh, vertical, if you will. Mm -hmm. So now you start with the patient experience right at their house, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden Uber Health, uh, that app might be integrated into the hospital's application, yeah, where yeah. all of a sudden the, the Uber is coming to their door, it's taking into the hospital, and now they have an app on their, uh, on their phone that is now uh, native to that hospital's environment. Right, so right. it's telling them you know, what the wait time is, where, where, how do they uh, you know, do the, um, the directions, if you will, to yeah. the to the uh, I wasn't to I the wasn't department. aware Uber had that. That's that's pretty. It's that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's out today. That's like uh, I knew that they had something, something similar for food, but yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the hospital thing seems to have eluded yeah. me. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it, it, and it's not just them. I mean, right, all right. the major yeah. companies yeah, have. Yeah. Uh, as you know, Amazon has a great uh, healthcare initiative. Yeah. Google, yeah. Microsoft, uh, IBM. So you know, yeah. major companies. Uh, are all looking at the healthcare uh, space because the opportunity is so great for innovation in areas like AI and blockchain yeah. and AR as, as, we're, as we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, w the question was uh, more or less where do we see IoT in place? So uh, the cameras, the GPS, um, the directions to the department, what can I do while I'm waiting, you know, how do I educate myself or maybe uh, edutain myself in a right, sense right. Uh, while I'm waiting and making that whole experience just uh, fantastic. Even in the, um, the inpatient scenario, there's a lot of uh, interesting technologies right uh, in the patient's room, you know, where they can watch movies, they can look at what's going right, to happen right. at their exam, you know, what preparations they have to have, so there's a lot of a lot of information being uh, shared with the patient to, yeah, to, you know, to keep make that, that a going. great experience for the patient. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that uh, Cleveland's also in an interesting spot uh, because we're very health centric yes. due to some of the hospitals, Cleveland Clinic probably Absolutely. the most prominent. Absolutely. Uh, but also because we have a, a great rejuvenation in the efforts from a, from a municipal standpoint to put more technology uh, uh, companies in here, right? We have a lot of workforce development uh, organizations trying to bring uh, tech talent in here. We have countless incubators right now with tech startups really trying yep. to push that envelope. Um, integrating AI into, into hospitals, I guess, is, is still, I, I, I knew that there was at least one, I thought there might be another one that the FDA may have approved, but in terms there, of, there may have been. yeah, in, in yeah. terms of getting people uh, kind of on board, um, where do you see blockchain fit into all of that, right? So, so we kind of covered IoT and AI and, and blockchain is the third thing that I kind of sure. put into the book that this podcast yes. is loosely yep, based yep. on. Yep. And you had a comment that you, had, when we were talking about it offline, you were like, well, uh, and, and hopefully I don't get this backwards, but you said um, blockchain needs AI more than AI needs blockchain. And uh, that stuck with sure. me, right? Yeah. So I'm you just curious. Throw IoT in there if you want to. Yeah, right? <laughs> right, but yeah. it was just one of those things where I was interested in, in kind of seeing you, seeing where blockchain really could fit in that medical uh, environment. Sure. Well, if you think about the, the concept of smart contracts, which mm -hmm. are just intelligent ways really to, to route the data mm -hmm. based on certain conditions, you know, if, then, else yeah. uh, type of logic. So the AI and the smart contracts can really help facilitate uh, the workflows mm -hmm. in organizations. But if you think about blockchain and patient matching, one of the big issues in patient data, if you will, mm -hmm is if you go to one hospital and then go to another hospital, how do we know that it's the right John Smith? Yeah. And that challenge of patient matching has been a challenge forever, ever mm -hmm. since we've uh, started sharing medical records, if you will. Once you mm -hmm. leave the bounds of that one uh, provider mm -hmm. organization, you have then have to think about how do I get my records over there so we don't do the same procedure again or if I'm traveling internationally, how do I you know, not be redundant and expose myself to x-rays or whatever right, unnecessarily, right. much less the cost itself of healthcare. 
So with blockchain and the security um, based on you know, all, all of the, the cryptography and the matching and the patient IDs, uh, a layer could theoretically sit on top of a lot of the healthcare systems and ensure that that patient is in fact who they say they are mm -hmm. and enable a lot of what they call um, its healthcare information exchange. And we have one here in Ohio uh, called OHIP, Clinicink. Okay. And that is where all the hospitals are kind of sending their information as a central repository. So, you know, there might be, you know, one could anticipate maybe there's a blockchain layer sitting on top of that to make sure that the patient data yeah, is in more fact of a accurate. verification kind of effort. As an example. Yeah, yeah. yeah of where blockchain uh, is, is, you know, and AI, you know, bolts yeah, yeah. on top of that actually just right. to help the whole, the magic of the algorithms there. Yeah, well, AI, I, I in, in, I'm sure that a bunch of AI guys that I know will kick me for saying this, but AI to me is a tremendous way to sort things. Uh, like that's when you just have, uh, you know, big data is more of a platform, but when you, when you have all that data coming in, when you have a lot of uh, sensors feeding in yeah. and all this information, yeah. and, and even smart contracts, like it, AI is just much faster than, sure. than a human being will ever be at sorting. Yep. So when I look at AI's practicality and in business, the first thing I think of is sorting that data. Hmm. So, um, in, in, in with blockchain, it's not as uh, uh, it's, it's not as clear cut. I think because you have smart contracts, but um, I think that it, like there's parts of blockchain that people just want to tokenize. Like you, they'd want to tokenize your identity, yep. and that's how they verify who's who. Sure. I think that there's an apprehension to having a token attached to a lot of these these platforms. Hmm. And like I saw a startup at uh, actually at Blockland in Cleveland, um, where they were tokenizing uh, a healthcare application, but they were also, the token had a dual purpose at being sold as an, as an ICO, you know, on, on, a, on Coinbase. Sure. And I think that that immediately, not that it delegitimizes the product, but it definitely from somebody that's looking at, you know, putting their identity into this, you know, smart contract that's also tokenized, that also people are trading for money. Uh, I think that that's, that, that that's definitely a social apprehension that I do see for blockchain. So. Seeing how smart contracts get implemented, I think, have to be a little separate from a cryptocurrency model. Um, I don't know if you'd agree with that, but well, it's, it's I, just something I, that, yeah. I, I agree with that, yeah. uh, but at the same time, I mean, say, but um, I also see the opportunity for, let's just say with healthcare for a while, the patient yeah. could and probably should be the owner of mm -hmm. all their data. So no matter which provider organization they went to, I should be in control and own all my data, right? So right, right. instead of the, the provider maybe saying, I have the data here and mm -hmm. I'm gonna share it with, with everybody, maybe I am managing that data also, mm -hmm. and I may be monetizing that. Uh, so as I move right, forward, right, yeah. you know, using uh, Choosing who to sell digital your currency, information to. somehow you know, I'm actually you know, making making some money off the the value of the information that I have, and that extends obviously pa uh, way beyond healthcare. Yeah. Uh, but just as an interesting new model in patient empowerment, if you will, or consumerization. Yeah. Uh, of the patient. So you know, maybe there is some opportunities um, uh, for us as patients to be in more control of our life, of our data, of our information, and healthcare certainly might not be an exception to that. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, there's actually a, a model I saw for a smart uh, store, like a smart retail store, mm. uh, and, and I'm not 100% sure if it was Macy's or not. I think it, I think it was. That's where my brain's going back okay. to. But basically, as you walk through, it immediately kind of creates a uh, profile for you, and then it will look look at me and be like, "Oh, that guy probably wants to look at you know sure. sports things," and of then. Course at the edge of the aisle, you're going to have thing, a tablet, basically, that will see me coming and then market, you know, crossbows or something that, that I would like, you know, or that it thinks I would like. And then I could even, I could help it build that AI and say, I don't like crossbows, or I do. And then I'll get, sure. you know, different things in the advertising over and over. Uh, I guess it'd be interesting that if you go through the store, you can build your own profile, but if you could also own it and you can say, I will offer you my profile in exchange for coupons. Yep. Right? Sure. I think that's kind of where... Uh, Everybody wins. Yeah. Because yeah, you, so. yeah, you, you see what yeah. you want to see. Right, right. right. You're, not, you're not getting marketed wild guesses. Yeah, They're yeah. very intelligent. But, you know, you know that's going on today as you go in the browser. How did it know? I just bought yeah. shirts from this store right now. I'm not, I, 
right? But that, I think that that scares people because it's not as transparent. Right, because then people sure, are like, Sure, that's you know, a trade-off. I can't tell you how many times I'm in a room and people are like, you're a tech guy? Well, tell me how they knew I was looking at cars, right? I didn't search it. You know, <laughs> yeah, that clearly, that's my, true. clearly yeah. my phone's listening Somebody's listening. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I get it all the time. And they're yeah. like, I never typed this anywhere. Yeah. I never looked at it anywhere. Yeah. I, I said it and my phone was listening to yeah. me, right? That's and I'm like, that is real. I've tested that. It is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but there's no, like, I guess that's, that it, it would be like, tapping then or why you're tapping or spying right i guess i mean yeah. you probably sign off i don't on, have an answer for that but yeah. there are there are elements of our life which you know, which are too uh, <laughs> too serendipitous to, what, to say well, yeah so you know you look at the risk though you know yeah. what is the worst possible scenario I they mean, know that i'm looking it, for a car it, man yeah yeah so maybe good maybe not yeah you know? well you know i have a i have a lot of smart devices in my home yeah. and uh, alexa is always listening of course uh, and that, that's how it has to work i yep. can't like i've had this conversation with somebody that was um, very anti smart home and they're mm -hmm. like well it's always listening I'm like yeah. well it's not constantly storing and maybe it is yeah. but it's, even if it is it's, it's storing, storing a, a, I think a few minutes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so, well it has and to then it just starts and then it, then it starts fresh yeah. until it hears Alexa or whatever your, yeah. your trigger yeah. word is yeah. and then so it goes you can go back there. a couple minutes or so but yeah but yeah. Then Otherwise, like, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. Like, like, what secret yeah. plans are you saying in front of Alexa <laughs> that you can't? You know. It's true. Yeah. You know, and I think that there's there's also there's positives and negatives to it because if you, if you think about it, if somebody is talking about building a bomb, yeah. and Alexa is like, oh, this guy's talking about building a bomb, should I alert somebody? Right. Yeah. You now that's intrusive because you don't have privacy in your home, but you also don't have somebody building a bomb, right? And I think that as uh, as a society. And this is a bit of a tangent, but as a society, as we um, develop more of these uh, systems and devices and, and, and they become more and more a part of us in our homes, yeah. uh, we're going to have to make some choices of, I think of so. what, yeah. what, what is privacy. Privacy definitely becomes a big issue. Yeah. So you, you're right, with the smart homes, there's uh, so many areas, especially when it comes to security, because we hear the stories about cameras being hacked yeah, and, you yeah. know, and, and all that in a home. So the good news is you have great security in the home but the bad news is that allows more devices in the IOT world yeah, yeah. Uh, to be potentially hacked right. right so but there are solutions out there uh, specifically for smart homes yeah. where there's another box that adds and another a, layer know, of protection layer of security so yeah so the the uh, voice assistants I think are, are here to stay yeah and I I see myself uh, a lot of innovation potentially occurring in that space, especially for, uh, there's an innovation right here locally where it's a, an Alexa skill, if you will, mm -hmm. and every morning the, uh, the senior citizen might say good morning, and the skill starts asking questions, you go through a routine uh, series yeah, yeah. of questions, and you know, they kind of do a, um, a health check, if, if yeah. you will, and maybe they have to repeat, uh, you know, count backwards from 10 or something, or talk about it, did they have a hot meal, but that mm -hmm. information is then shared with the caregivers and their loved okay, ones, and so uh, everybody yeah. is in the know now that life is good for, for mom and or dad, right, in yeah. that case, so the voice activated intelligence and assistance um, yeah, I definitely can think that's, be very, a very good thing. Going. Not to mention, you know, just waking up and saying, you know, what's the weather out today? Well, and that's know, something that I enjoy today. How's my commute today? this yeah. morning? You know, and, and those things. Yeah. What's the news? Yeah. Well, uh, I have I have something yeah. of when you open the door, it, and this is kind of annoying to anyone else that's in the house, but it's like, do you have a jacket on? It's 20 degrees. <laughs> it's set up because I don't wear a jacket when yeah. it's 20 degrees. Well, it has to be. Uh, right. Yeah, maybe it's well, that geared was, more towards the kids. <laughs> well, that was, that was, I set that up for me, so... It was just one of those things where yeah, sure. uh, it was an option. It was marketed. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. whatever, we'll put it on there, right? Yeah, and then everyone knows if I'm walking out, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, in fact, they know you're on your way to work, maybe. So right now, now thing. everyone's on the same page, yep. right? And I, but I, like I said, I think that the paranoia that comes with it isn't completely unfounded, because uh, there was a, no, you do give up privacy when uh, smart fridges first came out. That was a major issue. I remember yeah. people yeah. people getting into the network through the fridge, which yep. I think is. A very inventive way to to hack somebody's home. Sure, anything that has an yeah. IP address, right? For it's sure. Simple as that. And I think that you know when I talk to people specific to cybersecurity and IoT, I'm like, well, if somebody's going to go through all the trouble of hacking you, you have to have something that somebody's really going to make money off of, or if somebody really has a personal vendetta. But I don't think that's as common as uh, people might think. And I think that if somebody has a personal vendetta against them, there's also is that person also super adept at breaking into smart fridges, right? And I yeah. think that. 
uh, when IoT devices first started really popping up, or the smart home devices really started popping up, like three or four years ago, they weren't. They had no security measures. They were just yeah. pushed out to the market. Yeah. I think that was a mistake. It's very new. Yeah. Uh, now I don't see that. I see. I see a lot of them have security measures. They're not really interfacing with everyone on the network. Um, yeah, it can be a closed network. Your home. Yeah, yeah. Well, like even with 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 my, I don't have a smart fridge, but. Um, my Alexa units can't see my computers. Like it can't get into them. It sees that they're on the network. I'm sure, but it can't. You know, they're all protected, right? I have that. They're all closed off. They're sanctioned. They're not okay. in the same work groups, if you will. Good. And I think that that's kind of a best practice. But I think that the the devices now come out that way because they don't want like these companies don't want a backdoor into your house, right? The, the max the, the what people are really looking for, I think, is advertising or how to market to you better. They're not trying to find your pictures, right? Sure. Uh, at least that's that's my yeah. assumption. You know, yeah. I, maybe Amazon is, but um, but yeah, I think that uh, cybersecurity has a very interesting role because it has An so important many role too. well, it has so many layers, especially when you're looking at the the nursing home scenario. Because there's, I, I know that there's nursing homes do a lot of great things, but it's also you're handing somebody your parents' lives, yep. right? And yep. so there's power with that, and um, you you gotta have to navigate those those waters carefully. But uh, with IoT, yeah. that power that the nursing home yeah. has is also extended now to the loved ones and the caregivers who are not physically located there, thanks okay, to yeah, yeah. Um, the network. Right, if you will. so sensors thrown and everything back yeah. home, so, so now, you can now, also have the now same now information. All over where, in a sense, yeah. where before it might have been isolated. Yeah, so that's you true. really had no idea what was going on there. Yeah, so, no, that's that's yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think that transparency is going to be. Yeah. Uh, something that's that's a, a very great value, I think, moving forward. Yeah. You know, which is again part of the blockchain. I knew sale. you were going to yeah. say blockchain. <laughs> well, it is because because yeah. you want you want everyone to like if uh, if aware. if all of a sudden it's just Big Brother has the data and you can then say, well, let's make sure every like if everyone's aware of it, if every if everyone sees everything, then I guess that's fair, right? But then you go back to what's privacy, right? And sure. who really knows how to ascertain the data? And I think that uh, in some of the cybersecurity AI projects I've seen um, mm. that haven't been to market yet, I think that's important because th these aren't things that people are actually implementing, but they're, they're startups or they're prototyping. Uh, they, they give all the data to everyone, but I think only a very select few amount of people know how to sort that data, I guess, with sure. AI or yeah, know how to like actually. Sort, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. Uh, correlated, it's assimilated, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, aggregated. You know, and do all those things, uh, and that's where AI yeah. is really good at, especially yeah. when you get into the edge computing aspect. Mm -hmm. And even with that computer at the edge, you know, filtering, if you will, and uh, sending only the good data up, especially when it comes to healthcare, like all the Fitbit data or mm -hmm. your GPS data, how, how many miles you ran. You know, you don't need all of that data because it's, it's probably tracking every one or two mm -hmm. seconds, you know, that yeah, when you're yeah. getting a, a, a hit of data at that time. So. The summarization of it and the important data gets up to the cloud, and then from there uh, it can be placed into wherever it's going to go. And as you know, uh, even at the edge, the sensors are now uh, actually doing more and more uh, of some of that work, you know, in what they call fog computing. And so now uh, some of that logic is being built right into the chip before it even gets to the edge, much less to the cloud. Much less to the user. Right, right. So how do you define yeah. fog, fog computing? Because I've, I've heard a couple different, yeah, because it's, it's not quite edge computing. It's right. not, you know, your it's computer just computing. Well, to me, fog yeah. computing is uh, the sensor and mm. the circuitries right around that sensor, uh, sensor actually have some logic in it as well mm. that are uh, doing some of the filtering, the sorting, yeah, okay, the aggregating okay. uh, in advance. So okay. it's kind of a smart sensor in a sense. Yeah. Uh, so that's all sensor level computing. Yeah. It's just because yeah. because I've I've heard some that and again I don't know what's right or what's wrong really because file computing is still relatively new, yep. but understanding how that plays versus the edge I think is important. Sure, At least sure. how we're referring to it, sure. it's it's but computing may, on the device. In some cases you may not need an edge. You can yeah. just do everything right yeah. there and then exactly go right up to the cloud. But then you have people saying, well, my edge is on my device, yeah, sure, <laughs> and then and then sure. we're talking a different language. <laughs> You know, I, I think that you yeah. could appreciate this working in IoT. When IoT first started to become a coined phrase that mm -hmm. most people were referring to, everyone had a different definition for sure. it, right? You know, and, and I think now everyone's kind of uh, settled on it's it's the it's the sensors, it's the how they sensors, interact, yeah. it's anything how they interact. Anything that communicates, yeah. anything with an IP address. Yeah. Yeah, just so, the whole picture. But there's like, also you variations, know. as you know, industrial IoT, yep. which is a fantastic yep. initiative here in Cleveland yep. with Team Neo. 
uh, yeah. and you know what's going on there. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. The, the, the readiness assessment, the roadmap, mm -hmm. it's a great tool for manufacturers. And uh, we're hopeful to have one also coming out for healthcare as well, okay. which is pretty exciting. HIOT? Well, there's uh, <laughs> Internet of Medical Things. Okay, so okay. So instead of going at the front of that <laughs> acronym, but it's somewhere in the middle, right? IOT, and there's the MT? Internet of, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. blank here. Okay, the, interesting. Know, uh, is, that, is that also done by Team Neo? I, I think they're going to be working on that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. just to plug Team Neo real quick, I guess. They're, they're a workforce development initiative here in northeastern Ohio that uh, is centered around bringing companies to Cleveland to enjoy a lot of the great resources that we have available today and to help kind of grow this economy. Absolutely. And doing and a great job. Fantastic yeah. job. What they're doing right now is I think the, the focus is on manufacturing for the most part right now. With, Initially with for the IoT. Initially. For I yes, IoT, yes. yeah. And, um, you know, there's some great guys at Hitachi, Videra. I don't yep. know if you've met Dave Moon. A um, yep. bun bunch of guys over yep. there really doing some great things to get sensors and, and some new technology into existing manufacturers. Yes. But to also attract new manufacturers saying, hey, look, we got the guys in town today to build up these IoT projects, these blockchain projects, these AI projects, these just cybersecurity projects. Absolutely. AR, VR, you know, I think yeah. that's probably going to be bigger for um, for when healthcare comes around. Very hot in healthcare, yeah, especially at the yeah. new medical college that's being yeah, built. Yeah, yeah. With um, Microsoft, <clears throat> with the HoloLens. Yeah, and I've seen, I've seen, uh, uh, People at Case demo uh, yeah. virtual surgeries, yeah. and you know I've got to play with them. And, yeah, and having played with the, uh, I don't know if you saw, Lincoln Electric has a virtual uh, AR uh, welder. Yeah, yep. I've played with that, and I, don't, I guess I just don't like welding is the answer. <laughs> but the the fake surgery is is, is really interesting, yeah. right? Because it's it, it it's it's there. It's just this it's this sure. hologram on a table. You have you know your remotes. You kind of cut into it. You can you can see uh, a diagram. You could pull a heart out, but you could also see the sections of a heart. Uh, it's incredibly immersive, yeah. you know, and I think that's only going to get better. Sure. Um, now, would I trust somebody that's only ever done virtual surgeries to do a surgery on my heart? Maybe not, yeah. but I think that's a fantastic first step versus going through, you know, a bunch of cadavers on something that might not need one. Yeah, you know, I just uh, went to CES, and yeah. uh, of course, five G was, you know, the big, yeah. the big thing at CES, and. Uh, it's the virtual robotic surgery yeah. uh, that really gets interesting. So a remote, remotely doing that okay. with no latency and yeah, you yeah. Know, high speed internet. Uh, oh, off of 5G. Yeah, yeah, yeah off of 5G. Yeah, 5G is, 5G. Is, okay. that, yeah, you know, yeah. That's just you know, yeah. one, one of yeah. millions of examples. Yeah, and yeah. that's the promise of IoT though, isn't it? Yeah. Is that uh, you're really limited to your imagination on how to apply IoT. Yeah. Be it um, your operational efficiencies, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. the CNC machine, checking the vibration and the humidity. And it's interesting aspects of that arrive because you can watch the humidity and know that this machine is going to break uh, based on X uh, amount of humidity over a period of time. But then you can also start to make, uh, and I just learned about this, causal correlation. Okay. So maybe uh, the, um, the vibration and the humidity together are causing uh, uh, an, a failure of the device. And so... Okay. Thanks to all these amazing analytics that are now coming forward from IoT, mm -hmm. we're seeing some real, some really interesting uh, ways to do preventive maintenance, and predict the failure, uh, and you know, it's just as an example in manufacturing. Yeah, no, I was uh, I was hanging out with some guys at Western Digital, and they do they implement a lot of those with their hard drives today. Oh, I bet. So yeah, yeah they're they're they know when their hard like uh, it's funny they're like, well, our customers are getting lazier and lazier, so we have to become better and better because uh, our. Um, uh, the customer's not always right, but the customer's always the customer. Sure. So they used to want us to alert them when something was wrong. Now the customer wants us to alert them when something's going wrong, sure, right? And, sure. and with the sensors that they're putting in, it's, it's getting closer and closer to that. Change it before yeah. it fails. And I truly think yeah, that's we're, we're getting closer love and closer to that. that. Yeah. That is, yeah. That is when it's really exciting. In fact, yeah. you give that uh, ownership, if yeah. you will, right back to the manufacturers oh, for sure. and say, you know, it, because of your mean time before, between failures or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you know, 10,000 yeah, uh, yeah. know, hours, uh, just change it. Yeah. Take care of it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm out of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and even to take that a step further, once we start uh, bugging our own bodies, you know, completely with sensors, then yeah. you'll have all that going, hey, you know, your heart's not doing well, champ. We're going to yeah, get you in here. Yeah, the future looks pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I joke a lot that, uh, you know, with cell phones, the way those, those have grown, I actually used to never text because it was like with the, when you just had to press nine five times to get a Z, I, yeah. just, I just didn't do it. I couldn't do it. And then when you finally were able to have a keyboard, I liked that. And then we moved away from a keyboard. Now we do a lot of voice to text. Absolutely. I am so ready to just put the whole phone in my head. 
and just think, right? I, I'm sick of typing. I just want to think it, right? If I could just think it and close, yeah. like, oh, what is that? Oh, yeah, that's what it is. I'll be so much smarter and I won't waste. I mean, how much time do I waste a day looking things up on my phone? I sure. could just look them up in my head. Yep. And some people are like, that's invasive. I'm like, I'm ready for it. I am absolutely <laughs> ready for it. 100%. What's the difference? I'm visualizing it now. I already that's can't awesome. leave the yeah. house without my phone, so this is just the phone's in me. So right? you're all knowing. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Well, yeah, as, in real as good as Wikipedia is, right? <laughs> <laughs> or any web search. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. That is funny. Uh, yeah, so I think, but I think that's, where we're, that's where we're headed, you know? Yeah. I think it's for sure. You know, it made me think of the, um, an ac not an acronym, but just uh, how data, when you have raw data, it then moves into information. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, that that in, that information then turns into knowledge. Yeah. Which then turns into insight, which becomes yeah. you know which is the slogan of my company, wisdom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then with wisdom, you can make decisions. You have impact. Uh, and I think of especially in healthcare, how that wisdom can then be applied in yeah. real time by Absolutely. the clinician when they're you know h helping somebody. Uh, uh, with their diagnosis or their procedures yeah. and the same thing you know can be applied to the manufacturing or retail to banking, anything yeah anything absolutely uh, you know, uh, uh, the power of that uh, as we get towards wisdom mm -hmm. yeah and all the uh, the accumulation of this data hence you know the ibm watsons and yeah you know, and google's and everybody who's doing smart things google has some interesting things yeah. coming down the pipe you know amazon's building more in our backyard and you know even in Columbus, Ohio. So I think that yeah. we're gonna we're gonna definitely in the in the Cleveland uh, market we're gonna see a lot more of that come to us, and we're gonna be at the forefront of a lot of things as as we have been because Case yeah. is right down here, and Case Absolutely. was one of the first internet nodes. So which I have to remind people of frequently. We we started a lot of the technology. Really? So yeah, hmm. it's uh, it's important that we kind of keep our, our footing there because I think that as we grow. Um, you know, with manufacturing, I think we're still going to have this huge focus on healthcare and technology. I think that's what's going to It's the region. It's really us. the strength yeah. of the region yeah. that is going to push those. And that's why I think the opportunity is so great uh, for mm -hmm. blockchain, yep. for the Internet of Things. And really, that was why IoT Directions itself yeah. was formed, to help organizations understand um, the unlimited potential, in mm -hmm. many ways, of what IoT could do for them, not only on their operational efficiencies, mm -hmm. like we talked about vibration and humidity, yep. but on their product, maybe there is some IoT that wasn't there before that gives them an amazing competitive edge yeah. uh, to the tune of maybe monetizing the data coming out of that well, and reselling it somehow. Absolutely. So that is why uh, some of the uh, presentations that we've been doing mm -hmm. expose uh, the audience, if you will, to these really interesting IoT uh, ideas. And one of them is, you know, like the, temp mm -hmm. the temperature tracking that yeah. we were talking about, or, you know, monitoring the grease in a deep fryer, or look at the, the smart lights, uh, you know, the smart city initiative. So those types of use cases really can stimulate some internal localized thinking about how that yeah. IoT can be applied to their business. Right. Be it internal or external from the, at a product perspective. And that's where it gets really exciting. Yeah. So you're really helping people get the most out of their data then is really at its core. Yeah. Is or good. maybe an enhancement <laughs> to their business yeah. model and, sure. and, and ways that wasn't there before. Maybe not just a totally new one, but maybe yeah. an extension of an existing product line yeah. or something or better management so that uh, the the foreman who was working in the machine shop, when he hears that vibration, he knows it's going to yeah, fail. Yeah. Uh, how do we capture that? Yeah, and apply yeah. it to AI slash IoT, uh, and, and so that we can, you know, manage your operational efficiencies uh, much better. Yeah. The trick, the trick is to start small. You know, yeah. we we really recommend that we we start with a small project, mm -hmm. understand the value proposition. What's the ROI on that? What are the benefits that we got out of that? What are the analytics? What's the data? Mm -hmm. What what do we get out of that? Without trying to be, you know, to solve everything at once, get our feet wet. And then from there, we, we you know put in an architecture that can, is scalable, and then we start doing you know more machines, more different machines, mm -hmm. and um, you know that's that's one of the approaches that uh, we've been taking with organizations. Working right now with a company called uh, USA Firmware, mm -hmm. which has yeah uh, Bob, Bob Scatia. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And so they do you know the fog, they have a mm -hmm. Fogware product, and so you know we're helping organizations understand what the value of that is mm -hmm. to their organization. But of course, that understands us understanding yeah, what yeah. their business is Absolutely. so that we can help them think creatively about what IoT can bring to that and yeah. other technologies like blockchain, of course.
that's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, I think that, like I said, I think that uh, the the comment that blockchain needs AI and, and IoT yeah. more than they need blockchain, I think, is super true. It's both ways. Yeah, it's just bi directional. Yeah, yeah. I mean, blockchain is a good platform for yeah, IoT, yeah. or is IoT a good platform for blockchain? No. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, we'll definitely see how that changes. So, Do you, is there anything else you want to plug or? No, thanks for yeah, asking. Yeah, thanks no for problem. asking. Yeah. This was a fantastic conversation. I uh, I get excited when I think yeah. about what's going on in Northeast yeah. Ohio with Blockland and uh, potentially having this innovation hub uh, in Cleveland uh, to really make Cleveland a mecca, if you will, for yeah, that's technology. The goal. And uh, I, I think we're on our way. For sure. Uh, we're in a great period. So if, uh, if, if you could leave us with one piece of wisdom for anyone looking to understand more about IOT or get into IOT more uh, I guess what, what is your advice for somebody that's like I, I still don't quite get this you know some of the stuff there's gems flying over my head how do I grab onto this how do I get a part of, how do I get myself to be a part of this emerging technology sure sure uh, well we talked about the uh, the consumer side of that right just yeah. uh, bringing Alexa into your home or, mm -hmm. or having a, a smart doorbell or yeah. you know you could start playing with that uh, that technology internally of course yeah. Um, if you want to move towards uh, blockchain and start understanding that, there's a lot of information being shared through the Blockland initiative about um, blockchain. Um, Bitcoin is interesting. Maybe uh, do a little yeah. research on Bitcoin. Maybe download the, uh, the app and yeah. uh, accept uh, digital currency. Get your feet wet there. Run on Ethereum or you know yeah. something. something. Yeah. There's there's lots of different options, but it's yeah. always good to get, hear it from an expert. Yeah. So. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> All right. Well, that that wraps it up. Thank you, John. Appreciate it, and uh, you know we'll catch you next time. Thank you, Mike. Awesome.